RGB in your gaming build? Okay, you can do that. RGB in your mouse? Yeah, you can do that too. RGB in your sit stand desk? Well, you know what? You can do that now too. Welcome to Machines More. Today we're taking a quick look at Cooler Master's new GD160 ARGB sit stand height adjustable desk. Uh, there's two other standing only desks that uh, were launched at the same time. There's a GD120, 120 centimeter ARGB version. And there's also a simpler RGB less uh, 160 centimeter model, which is the GD160. Big thanks to Cool Master for providing this desk for review. And full disclosure, this video is not sponsored by them. So I like sit stand height adjustable desks. Uh, they're very practical, not just for alternating between sit and standing, but more so to customize uh, the height for each individual. If you want the desk a little higher or a little lower, simple button press does it, right? Of course, this is not a new development in the world of computing furniture and Cooler Master is not responsible for uh, coming up with this, right? But this isn't just your average modular desk. A GD stands for gaming desk, I think. So this is kind of a gaming focused desk, which is kind of a, you know, undefined category, if you will. And perhaps to the outsider, that just means it's got a bunch of RGB, which this desk does. But actually, I think there's a few details here that make it quite a good desk uh, for the right user. So the G160, it's got 160 in the name. That stands for the length of the desk in centimeters. So this is a quite a generous work surface. It's good for a dual monitor setup if you want to do that. I think if you're on a single monitor, and will organize 120 centimeters or about four feet, that's good. But that extra 40 centimeters, that gets you a little extra room for your peripherals and less than perfect workspace management. Now this desk, it does ship in two packages. One is the legs, the braces, the hardware, and the other one is the large work surface, which is 160 centimeters in length, but also 75 centimeters across. It's all particle board on top finished wall with a laminate in the middle. You'll want some help moving this one since it's a little unwieldy, but with some care, you can put it together by yourself, which that's what I did here. The harbor is nicely labeled out of the box. In this plastic sleeve, it's packed well. A couple of the brace screws that were pre-installed had rattled themselves loose uh, when I got mine. So make sure you check the boot box for any loose screws. It would have been nice to have some spares for those, but they didn't include any for those. It'll make more sense to mount it upside down and then flip it over, especially since you do have to mess around with the cables from the controller and then finish up the cables and then the management of those cables as well. So you'll go ahead and put the braces together, mount the motorized legs on them, and then you'll loosen the braces and then line up the holes to match the holes under the desktop. When you get to this step, the manual does tell you to loosen the braces after you tighten them in an earlier step. Uh, but I would also recommend just go ahead and you know thread in those desktop screws loosely to line everything up perfectly, and then you can tighten them all down. Then retighten the braces if you want at this point. Uh, the Allen key could have been a bit longer on the shorter end of the tool that's supplied in order to clear the side braces. If you have your own tool, this might not be an issue, but uh, I did want to test with what's included. And then this tool, it's also a little short for clearing the feet since the bolts are in a recess. It's kind of hard to tell where the floating middle brace should be positioned other than by some rough estimation. So I'm guessing this was done to standardize some of these components between the other desk models, but a small mark on the the, on this particular component could easily alleviate this. I did note that this desktop has threaded inserts, metal inserts for the uh, hardware, and that's great for the installation and for the longevity. And considering that this is a particle board, that's pretty important. And most desks that I've tested simply just have pre-drilled pilot holes and you just screw it in with a wood screw. At this point, pop the power supply in, the RGB control, and you'll hook up the cables. And there are a lot of cables. Uh, the cable management covers and your gaming desk now it's ready once you flip it over and stand it right side up you have these slate covered strips at the front and the rear and there's a small recess here which will keep stuff uh, from rolling off it's also kind of inconvenient which i'll get to in a second there's also a very large cable management solution here which can be great if you're using a monitor mount but the combination of these two features makes using a monitor with certain bases a tricky affair unless you want to set it up off to the side which is uh, may not make much sense but i think potentially pushing this cutout rearward or a little 
little bit smaller and off to the side or you know two sides that might make more sense if they want to keep this feature the desk it does go as low as 65 centimeters to as high as 130 so there's adequate range there one of the inclusions is a mouse pad i call this one medium sized it's supposed to be water resistant to cold liquids the work surface does have a chamfered edge towards the underside it's not perfectly square so there's less likelihood of bashing your knees uh, on the corner when you're sitting on it versus uh, most square edged workstations on the market. The top edge does have a small round over and that's nice if you do rest your elbows at the desk. Uh, I, I personally would have appreciated a little more but this is actually better than most desks that I've seen in this uh, category. The sides, they are purple and I get that they were going for a gamer aesthetic and that certainly does come across, right? But the purple paint on the side edge, I, I get it, this is Cooler Master's thing, right? There's gonna be a hard time matching your other furnishings and perhaps something a little bit more neutral would be appreciated here, especially considering that the user can also you know, already customize the coloration of the desk through the ARGB. And uh, unfortunately, also one of the countersunk screws that was proud on the side, and they're all sunk at different heights. You do have a few memory presets and primarily this is gonna be one for sitting and one for standing, but uh, there's another setting you can use for an intermediate setting, or if you share a desk with someone, they can dial in their own setting as well. So that's a nice touch there. Oddly, I wasn't able to return the desk to the exact same number when I tried it a few times, which you would think it would be able to do that since it's a digital readout, but okay, it's a millimeter, right? So I'll cut them some slack. You do have very clear display. It displays in metric units, centimeters, which I'm fine with, but if you're used to imperial units, once you dial in a preset, you're not gonna have to worry too much, but then just, you know, there's just numbers at that point. The motors, they move pretty smoothly. Probably not supposed to do this, but... And this desk can support up to 100 kilograms. You know, that's that's a lot of weight to put on a desk, but uh, in theory, that's what it's uh, limited at. So, okay, so onto the lighting. You have this strip at the front and a strip at the back, and you can toggle this with a quick access button. You can, you can change the modes, and uh, there's, you know, rainbow wave, a few single color modes, and that single color, yeah, it happens to be that shade of uh, Cooler Master's purple color. And if you really wanna go in depth, you can just plug the USB cable into your PC and then utilize that Master Plus software that Cooler Master uses for its RGB stuff. Interestingly, when I, you know, pull, go into the Master Plus software, the display of the rear strip, you know, uh, corresponds to the front strip on this desk. And the display on the front strip on the uh, on the software actually is indicating the, what's happening on the rear strip. So I don't know if they switched the two strips on this desk or if that's just a bug in the software, but that, that is something that happened. And so yeah, you have a lot more freedom on the Master Plus software. If you don't want the RGB at any point, you can just you know press and hold. You can turn off the lighting. So, you know, sometimes you don't want it. This one, it's coming in at an MSRP of 899, which is on the higher end of pricing for a sit-stand desk. I, I get it, Cooler Master is not a desk company. The volume and the shipping costs are gonna come into play here, but I think you're really gonna have to want the extra features here over what uh, you can find on the market otherwise. Um, you're more price savvy consumer, you could just get a lower price competing model and just stick your own LED strips on, right? And um, for the higher end position that this desk is at, I think the finish quality, it's it's gotta be closer to perfect. And I'm not seeing that quite there yet with this desk. Um, the you know the software, the the finishing on the edges, just to name a few things, right? So there's there's a little bit of way to go, room for improvement there. Uh, the alternatives I haven't seen it, but the 120 centimeter version with ARGB that's 379. But do keep in mind. It is a non-adjustable desk. In the wider option, the fixed height GD160 without ARGB, that's 350. So overall, this one though, it is a good desk. I think sturdy, lots of ideation, good good concepts here that went into this. And if Cooler Master can fine tune things a little bit better on the design and the finish, I think that next generation is gonna be very competitive. That'll do it for this one. I'll leave links down below. Please like, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.